Today, Biden has kids in cages and also Merrick Garland uh, is grilled by Congress. We've got a lot coming up today and it starts right now. <clears throat> Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I'm Sarah Gonzalez. Today joined by Eric July, Blaze TV contributor, who apparently got the tie dye memo. Oh yeah, yeah, I got that. It was in the email that we. That were is this, so, right? that's really funny. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> um, and my friend Yaku Buyans, host of the Yaku Buyan Show, who did not get the tie dye memo. I did not memo. get the tie dye memo. <laughs> yeah. But do you own anything tie dye? To be fair. No. <laughs> <laughs> but for you, I would have gone out and. You would have gotten something. it. All right, we got it. We got to coordinate next yeah. time. Uh, that's funny. All right, so um, first up, let's talk about. Uh, President Biden's kids in cages, because as we know, uh, one of the great things about getting rid of the orange man, Nazi himself, President Donald Trump, was because he kept kids in cages. And he not only kept kids in cages, but he ripped kids from their parents' arms, straight from their parents' arms. Sometimes I think the arms fell off because he was ripping them so hard from their <laughs> parents' arms and throwing them into the cages. That's not actually what happened. But if you were reading the media headlines, that is what they wanted you to believe. Like a Quentin Tarantino movie. Yes, yeah. they're just he's ripping them and throwing them in the cages, locking them up with no key, and that these kids were dying in record numbers if you were believing the mainstream media headlines that you were reading. Uh, well, Joe Biden has opened up border detention camps for migrant children. Um, and the coverage is a little bit different, but luckily we do have, uh, I think that it's Peter Ducey, a uh, Fox News reporter, who is like the only person who's allowed in the room who actually asks legitimate questions to White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. Uh, and he asked her about uh, the differences here on these border detention camps, which by the way, started under the Obama administration. Um, all of these detention facilities that they hit Trump for were built under the Obama administration with, yes, Joe Biden as vice president. Uh, but here is a White House press secretary on the kids in cages. Watch. It's a temporary reopening during COVID-19. Our intention is very much to close it, but we want to ensure that we can follow COVID, state, COVID protocols uh, as, we, uh, as, we, as unaccompanied minors come into the United States. But it's the same facility that was open for a month in the Trump administration, summer 2019. That is when Joe Biden said, under Trump, there have been horrifying scenes at the border of kids being kept in cages. And Kamala Harris said, uh, basically, babies in cages is a human rights abuse being committed by the United States government. So how is this any different than that? We very much feel that way. Uh, and so the, these are facilities. Let me, be, let me be clear here. One, there's a pandemic going on. I'm sure you're not suggesting that we have children right next to each other uh, in ways that are not COVID safe, are you? I'm suggesting that Kamala Harris said that this facility, putting people in this facility, was a human rights abuse committed by the United States government. And Joe Biden said, under Trump, there have been horrifying scenes of border uh, at the border of kids being kept in cages. Now, it's not under Trump, it's under Biden. This is not kids being kept in cages. This is, this is kids, this is a facility that was opened that's going to follow the same standards as other HHS facilities. It is not a replication, certainly not. The, that's, that is never our intention of replicating the immigration policies of the past administration. But we are in a circumstance where we are not going to expel unaccompanied minors at the border. That would be inhumane. That is not what we are going to do here as an administration. I'm sure you're not suggesting that uh, we have facilities that are not COVID safe, are you? I mean, we're only releasing illegal immigrants into the state without a COVID test. We're only doing that. But certainly you're not suggesting that children who are not like at all at risk for this virus, certainly you're not suggesting that we put them in a facility that is not COVID safe because everything gets to be blamed on COVID now. Yeah, this was bizarre because she's kind of talking out both sides of her mouth. She's trying to utilize the fact that there is a pandemic going on, but doesn't really I express how exactly they're different at any point in time during that conversation. And she had, considering that she was asked numerous times, she had plenty of opportunity to do that, to say, OK, well, this was what was happening under the previous administration. This is what's happening under ours. Instead, she said we wouldn't replicate it, but it's a pandemic. What does that even mean? Um, but it seems that 
of course, she just doesn't want to admit that a lot of the policies in terms of what's going on right now are the same. It's the same uh, thing that was happening. Her excuse is just, well, it's different because pandemic, which has uh, been their excuse really for the past year in terms of a lot of their policies, a lot of Democrats policies uh, from this this last uh, particular election. The whole uh, the, the, the whole like immigration thing when it comes to Democrats has always been a hilarious thing, because when you look at them, I've talked about it on this show before, especially with deportations. Trump actually had less. America, don't take my word for it. Under uh, under it, well, you can't say first four years. It's only four years at this point. Had less uh, deportations than than Barack Obama. Barack Obama is why they call him the, the deporter, deporter in chief yeah. for for a reason. No, it wasn't because they changed the rules of what a deportation was. No, that's actual removals um, that he had. So it's always been bizarre that they get to take the high ground mm -hmm. on this. But I guess it's just because they've been a, doing a good job with the rhetoric yeah. and presenting the other people as the bad guys while they get away with the loot or rather doing the same. Thing. All right, some things I want to say here, okay. There's a difference between policy and practice. You can have all the policies you want, but in practice, in theory, this is what you do at the border. You have yes, to separate have the to. child to. from the parent, right? Bush did it, Obama did it. Yes, Obama built the facilities, which then all of a sudden they called cages when Trump came. And under my recollection, Trump also served during the pandemic. Mm. And they attacked him during the oh, pandemic. That's interesting. Yeah, good point. They, they attacked him during the pandemic mm -hmm. for putting kids in cages. Well, now there's COVID. We got to do this for COVID. Well, are you treating the adult? No, you have to separate. This is called prima facie, okay, in law, which means child endangerment. Bringing a child from Mexico to the United States is a prima facie violation. It is child endangered. Just taking that child in that caravan is endangering a child. If you're a CBP agent and you're standing at the border, the first thing, and I've told you guys this before, the first thing they're trying to do is protect that child. Yeah. Protect the child because this child is practically dead arriving at the border, walked from Guatemala for crying out loud with no food or water, right? That's endangering a child. And yes, of course, you're going to put them in facilities. And by the way, she's saying this facility was open. It's the same facility. I made a call 30 minutes before the show, okay, to CBP. It's the same facility mm -hmm. that Trump used mm -hmm. it, because the it's the same, the exact same yeah. facility. Now, there's a different facility now. We lined it with soft foam and put toys <laughs> in it. And it's like a play park. No, it's not. It's the same facility that was built under yeah. Obama. And this is like, I'm home. You know, this Biden saying, I'm home. I built this. <laughs> yeah. We're back. We're home. Yeah. But all of a sudden, it's different. Her argument is so bogus. America, listen, they've been lying to you through their teeth from the get-go, saying, well, this is now a, a, a pandemic. Trump served under the same mm -hmm. pandemic. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we were talking about, uh, or I kind of poked fun at the way that the media, if you're listening to the mainstream media under Trump, it was always kids in cages, right? So, uh, you know, especially the Washington Post, they were, oh, kids in cages. We can't believe President Trump. He's so xenophobic. He puts kids in cages. Uh, well, now all of a sudden, uh, it's no longer kids in cages, according to the Washington Post. It is actually a migrant facility. Uh, the first migrant facility for children opens under Biden. As you can see, if you are watching this program and not listening to the audio podcast, uh, it, it, that, that is the headline that we are uh, that we are shown here. So it is called a migrant facility now. Uh, old and busted is kids in cages. New hotness is first migrant facility for children opens under Biden. And it is interesting because, you know, you guys brought up the uh, the emergency. Well, this is, I mean, it was only approved for emergency use because we're in a pandemic and we only use it for emergencies. Yeah. It's for emergencies only. I think that it was pretty much an emergency when um, Democrats were encouraging a huge caravan of immigrants to come over here. And uh, they had a large influx of too many people and they did not have any housing for them because there were so many freaking people that all came in at once and they had to open up temporary facilities for emergencies. Kind of sounds like the same thing, but all of a sudden, it's only a migrant facility. Please, what are you trying to give the president a hard time? All he's trying to do is keep everyone COVID safe exactly. and also oh, exactly. make sure we know who's coming. Yeah, it's like, what does that have to do anything? And that's what I'm trying to figure out what she's saying, because she's literally, if you watch that, um, and I'm glad that we played it, because you can see that she is talking out of both sides of her mouth. It's not, she does no effort to actually express 
what specifically is the difference? She doesn't even attempt to do that. She just says, well, COVID reasons is basically and then just uh, the woman is grossly underprepared yeah she is grossly she is. every day McEnany yeah. would walk in with a file oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely that knows your blood ass. type yeah. okay yeah. So this awesome. woman she's is grossly rock. underprepared yeah. that's why she's she, always circling yeah, back. She yeah I'm gonna circle and, and, and she probably if in doubt, back on this one and, and here's the school of the left if in doubt throw out the word code yeah it's like it's with COVID. anything else, though. It's like with racism. Uh, but Trump, like, right. Trump oh, yep. was there under COVID. Actually, he dealt with the crisis. You're picking up the gravy and the cream at the end here. It's easy to say, hey, um, we're using these facilities that now, fantastic facilities that was built for this purpose. No, it was built when, when our border was under siege in the middle of a pandemic, in the entry of a presidential term, and, and now all of a sudden they want to take credit for it. And now the children are being kept safe. Hey. President Biden, if you want to keep children safe, why don't you reopen the office in the White House, the anti-trafficking office that took us four years to build? Why don't you fill that seat again, right? Because you've said nothing, nothing since day one when you came in about trafficking. So they don't know what they're talking about. Which, they don't give a rip. Which, and, and so, by the way, just to kind of add to that, because now, of course, you know, previously uh, President Trump was literally ripping children from their parents' arms. Now, it, the, well, the, these are just unaccompanied minors. Yeah. They're just, un, they're un, these are unaccompanied people. President Biden wouldn't do something like rip a kid from his parents, from their parents' arms. And it's like, it's, it's so what would you have us do? Well, too? again, again, I, this is why, even as a libertarian, I've always thought the immigration argument on that stance mm -hmm. was always nonsense mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter what it is that you do. It doesn't matter if it's me. If I had a child and I went to go do something that they consider breaking the law, as illegitimate as I might think the law is, what are they going to do? Separate the parent right. from you the child. To. Like, that's exactly what's going to happen. You it's have not, to. It's not like you get to, oh, well, wait a minute, I have my baby with me. You can't know. They, they don't do that. That's not how they operate. It doesn't matter, what, matter if it's here or if it's if it's down at the border that's what it's always a bizarre yes, argument to yes. hear people bring that up like, like where do you want the kids to go like, exactly. yeah you want them to go to the adult facility eric eric you can't be in a grocery store today and discipline your child for throwing a tantrum and without cps will literally come take your child from you. yeah they'll separate yeah. they'll come separate <laughs> and rip, yeah. come rip your child from your arms but, exactly but when it's over there then those practices are fine right yeah. then it then it's good all of a sudden, but when it's at the border, it's a weird thing. Like when really you think is. about it, it doesn't matter what the, if they claim that it is a crime and you are with your child, you don't get to go to the jailhouse if they're taking you there. If you're under arrest and you're being detained, you don't get to go to the jailhouse with your child. Like it's not like they like they're just going to. Oh, it's, it's perfectly fine. You committed whatever crime. And again, it doesn't even matter if you agree or disagree with it. Everybody gets separated from their from their child. Right. If they're going to be detained. But, but, but I thought, my opinion. Yeah, but I thought Kamala Harris. I thought she said um, there's no unaccompanied minors that come across the border. Remember, mm. it's all their parents. Right, right. They're all with now parents. Now all of a sudden well, they're well, unaccompanied. See, now all of a sudden they're I've been unaccompanied. telling you they're unaccompanied forever. But, that, but yes, that's been the yes. dishonest conversation that's been had about immigration as we treat it as it's well not uh, us but certainly other people, including my fellow libertarians, treat it as if it's a one size fits all. Where it's everybody that comes over here right. is just like that. It's just right. a, a, right. a family right. that they're that just, just wants a better, a better life. That's not. And I, I've lived in South Texas. I've seen it with my yes. with my own eyes. Yes, human traffic. I don't care where you're at. To act as if everybody that comes across the border is is in that situation uh, is bogus. Absolutely. Human yeah. trafficking is an absolutely real and thing. It's case it is a by real case. thing. It is absolutely, yeah. and we should treat it. We should treat it like that. Like I said, I, I, I lived there. I'm not one of these guys up in Upper East Coast or something uh, uh, pontificate. No, I actually lived there. Yeah. I've seen it. Yes, there are people that are like, I want a better life, and I'm willing to get away from absolutely. from this bull crap that I'm away. I do whatever it takes. And then there's other folks that are you know doing things that are objectively bad and. Actually Actually, are committing acts of actual human human trafficking. And the fact that we can't even bring that up, or we have to have a one size fits all, is the problem with the discussion when it comes to immigration in this country. Yeah, uh, a lot, a lot there to uh, to digest. All really great points. Um, let's get into Merrick Garland after the break. I know he has been grilled by Congress. We've got some sound bites to play for you, just so you know what the United States may be getting into. I'm not going to say you're going to be happy about it. But you need to know. Uh, first, we want to thank our sponsor, Home Title Lock. So uh, if you have not heard of the, uh, the crime of home title theft, consider yourself lucky. Because if you've heard of it, that's probably because it's, hap it's happened to you and um, you've lost like all of the equity in your home. Uh, Cybercrime is up 75%. 
right now because of all of the COVID stuff going on. And uh, that means home title theft. You're, I mean, it's it's up as well. The FBI uh, is telling people to make sure to protect themselves because it is so quickly growing uh, in crimes. So our home titles are kept online where all of these thieves and no do no do gooders uh, can go find access to it. They can forge your signature on a quick claim deed. They, they will say, oh, this person sold their home to me. So now I can take out loans on your home and then leave you in debt. And so all of your retirement nest egg that you have been saving is just like that. It's gone and you can't do anything about it because by the way, uh, common identity theft programs, they don't protect you. Your banking program, you may have like a little bank assistance program and you're like, I'm sure that protects me. That doesn't protect you either. Home title lock does, all right? The instant home title lock detects someone tampering with your home's title, they will shut it down. Now, you're not going to know if you're a victim unless you go register your address and check it. Go to HomeTitleLock.com right now. Use code RADIO. You will get 30 free days of protection. Uh, They will help you manage this crisis. And trust me, you're going to need that help because it is a nightmare. You got to go to HomeTitleLock.com. Register your address. See if you are already a victim. HomeTitleLock.com. Code RADIO. Back in a minute. President Joe Biden's nominee for U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland sat in a lot of confirmation hearings today, uh, was grilled about a wide variety of things. But, um, you know, again, I mean, this is attorney general for the United States. Very important to know his um, his his philosophy on widespread U.S. policies. I mean, you got to know everything here. Uh, We were talking about illegal immigrants. We we're talking about the border facilities. So let me just give you guys this one. Here is uh, Merrick Garland on um, whether illegal boarding crossings should still be a crime and whether or not he will prosecute those crimes. Watch. Do you believe that illegal entry at America's border should remain a crime? Well, I haven't thought about uh, that question. Uh, uh, I just haven't thought about that question. I I, I think, uh, you know, the the president has uh, made clear that we are a country of uh, with the borders and with the concern about national security. Um, I don't know of a proposal to uh, decriminalize, but still make it uh, unlawful to enter. I just don't know the answer to that question. I haven't thought about it. Uh, Wow. Okay, but. Uh, he hasn't thought about that it. That is concerning at the highest level. <laughs> I mean, it seems like a, a kind of a no-brainer here. Do you really need to think about what your answer would be if it is, in fact, illegal to cross the border? Wouldn't you then prosecute it? You kind of. What's the point of having it be illegal if you're not going to then <laughs> prosecute it? You kind of should lean towards the law. Right. What's the law say at the moment? Wait, are you saying the attorney general should actually follow the the law? law. But you know what I felt like when I saw that? I felt like he he literally, he behaved uh, 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 like a guy who who thought, how do do you know something I don't know? (laughs) Why was I not briefed? Are we not going to prosecute? He's like, well, I, I haven't uh, thought about it. I, uh, uh, by the way. Ever? You mean ever? You've never thought about it? Right. Uh, yeah. Ever? You don't have an opinion on whether the law should prevail at the border? You're just absent minded. You're just an airhead. Mm-hmm. Like the one brain cell fell off. <laughs> Apparently. I don't you know. I've never, never thought about it. I'm sorry. It was a very. Get back, get back to you. Very after bizarre, my hearing, yeah, I'll circle after my back. confirmation. A very bizarre answer, um, especially when he said, I think the, the president's made clear that borders are important. Like, no. has he? When? Well, the thing is, is that they didn't ask Joe Biden, they asked him. Yeah. And at the end of the day, and I mean, it was it's much like what, what happened with the, um, with the recent Supreme Court uh, uh, justice. Why am I blanking out on her name? Um, but when it's the same thing, it's like, yeah, yes. So they're asking her like, the, it's like, OK, it doesn't matter that this person is bringing me in to, to feel right. this position. It's right. my position is or my personal opinion. It's like I have to dictate what's going on. So it's an easy question. It doesn't matter. They didn't ask Joe Biden. So exactly. I don't know. That kind of response was a bizarre one. But really, really what it ultimately boils down, I may, may be separating from both of you guys here is, yes, he will criminalize it, but he knows that and he's completely conscious of the fact that, well, the people that generally support us right now 
that's a touchy subject. So I can't just straight up say, right. yeah, we are. Because, right. again, you can say what you will about it. Obama was a lot of the same thing. He was a hawk down there. Yeah. I, I know a lot of people thought that he was flimsy on him. No, he was not. No, he was. That guy was kicking folks out of there left and left and right. He wasn't playing around down there. Mm -hmm. So much of Biden, I believe that he's going to do a similar thing. But when he say it, of course not. That's why well, he's he doesn't like, want to be on the hook yeah, to his constituents be, exactly, in public. Exactly. Right? So he, he doesn't want to put the stake in the ground and say yes because the, the, you know, they may fry him. Exactly. Right. Right. Exactly. right. exactly what it is. Uh, all right. So Merrick Garland on let's talk about um, his stance on whether or not the DOJ should crack down on online misinformation to, you know, prevent domestic terrorism because all we have to hear about now is how a bunch of white supremacists are committing domestic terrorism, which is just up substantially, and it's all the country yeah, I got, needs I got to pay attention to. I got attacked on my to. way to the, to the, uh, Did to you? the studio. Yeah, like oh a little clansman okay? just around the, around the corner. Oh, just, no. It was bad, man. Oh, so, gosh, I'm sorry to hear yeah, that. Yeah, no, yeah. And the police won't do anything nah. because they're in on it, too, yeah, as yeah. we know. <laughs> Uh, here is Merrick Garland on combating online misinformation watch. You've discussed your own experience with domestic terrorism cases uh, and your plan to prioritize this issue. It's something uh, the FBI director has said is one of our most pressing um, threats. Um, do you think the DOJ has a role to play in examining the role of misinformation and incitement online um, to contributing to violence um, um, and uh, that, that the DOJ has a role in working uh, to help us develop um, reasonable solutions to this challenge? Well, uh, again, Senator, I think that uh, every opportunity the Justice Department uh, has to work with uh, members of the Senate to uh, think about how to solve problems and how to craft legislation is one that we should take. Um, I, 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 I don't have in mind particular legislation in this area. I do think that um, an important part of the investigation of uh, violent extremist groups is following their activities uh, online and getting an idea of uh, what kind of information, misinformation um, is, is putting, uh, being put out. So I want you guys to, to hold on to that, right? Hold on to what he said there. Um, and I want to couple it with what he said about uh, whether or not you know, we we hear from them that the far right rioters, uh, you know, oh, well, they're guilty of this. They're guilty of that. It's incitement. It's insurrection. All of these things. They're they're the real enemy of the United States here. But what about when it comes to far left rioters uh, at the federal courthouse? Because remember, that did happen. Yep. That actually happened. Uh, here is the difference. Merrick Garland says that it's actually well, it's not domestic terrorism when they do it. Watch. Let me ask you about uh assaults on federal property in places other than Washington, D.C., Portland, for instance, Seattle. Do you regard assaults on federal courthouses or other federal property as acts of domestic extremism, domestic terrorism? Well, Senator, my own definition, which is about the same as the statutory definition, is a uh, use of violence or threats of violence uh, in an attempt to uh, disrupt uh, democratic processes. So an attack on a, uh, a courthouse while in operation, uh, trying to prevent judges from actually deciding cases that plainly is um, domestic uh, um, uh, extremism, um, 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 uh, uh, domestic uh, terrorism, um, an attack simply on a government property at night or any other kind of uh, circumstances is a clear crime and a serious one and should be punished. I don't mean, I don't know enough about the facts of the example you're talking about, but that's where I, I draw the line. One, one is both are uh, criminal, um, uh, but one is uh, a core attack on our democratic institutions. So apparently, to all you domestic terrorists out there, apparently if you just c c commit all the domestic terrorism you want at night, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. By the way, this is the guy who just said he wants to help combat uh, online misinformation. What could, what could possibly go wrong here? Look, but then he says both are criminal. No, well, if they were criminal, you didn't. Well, we, didn't see, we didn't see it prosecuted when you burnt down private businesses at night and through BLM and Antifa. And no, it wasn't criminal. Well, that's not, as Eric right. would say, their cathedral. It's yeah, not their yeah, cathedral. I told you, yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah. So I thought it's criminal. Yeah. Only listen, is this the house. Motley crew? Did we go out and find our dumb and dumber? And this, the, whoever can't speak, I, 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 do you not? <laughs> when he cites things like, well, I don't really know the law on this. You're about to be the attorney general of the United States, the highest legal mind in the land, supposedly, right? 
You should walk in there with case law on case law on case law, prepared saying, hey, this is Brown versus so and so, and this is what I'm citing. And this is this is like I'm, I'm baffled from the press secretary to the president of the United States basically fumbling, can't speak. Now the attorney general can't. This is like a banana republic. Yeah, <laughs> which, which, by the way, so, Eric, I want to get your thoughts. But as he's talking and he's like, uh, 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 I noticed all of us lean forward. <laughs> You're like, what? Yes. yes. <laughs> Do you have Continue? a thought? Continue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. Good night. Go but no, like that's what I've been saying in the case that I've been making and that it's only when you get go at their cathedral when they consider it an actual problem. You can be destroyed. Your business can be burned down and all of that. None of that matters. But apparently it's the democratic process, which isn't even a thing. Um, and if it is a thing, it's a very bad thing because <laughs> that, that democ democracy isn't good. This moronic idea that if you have a majority of the vote, that equals righteousness or justice, completely nonsense. But either way, he's he's highlighting that simple fact. And this is how. People in that position, a lot of folks that are in that uh, that building right there, they would absolutely say that. It's only when you go at us and then when you go at us, you're by default going at everybody else, which I have made this case so many times on this show that that ain't got nothing to do with me, y'all. Yep. They, they, if they're yep. going after y'all, they're going after y'all. Don't put that on me, democratic process. I mean, I ain't want nothing to do. I don't even want you to have a job, bro. That ain't got nothing to do with me. If it was up to me, all of y'all would be thrown out on That's the right. That's right. And forced right. to get a real job if it was up to me. So it's always bizarre how they word that when it comes to domestic terrorism. But ultimately, what you know, the actual conversation is, of course, before I went on that rant, is the fact that it is some inconsistency as far as what they will apply that it's just bizarre to see so much happen i guess over the last year for example with this whole with antifa types and, and destroying like i mean you're talking about billions of, of dollars yeah. in property people yeah. that actually you know more people ended up dying as a result of those and that never was considered domestic terrorist because it was a it was a cause that they claimed to support it was never a consideration of a uh, disrupting the democratic process or anything when they did it it's only when the people that they felt were their enemies went to their cathedral yeah. kicked their feet and again more information comes out of, I don't know if anybody's been keeping up with what happened on, on, on the 6th with the, the supposedly the deaths you know we know what happened with with, with brian uh yeah, sick nick when he actually was not the media ran with that that was the main thing oh my god they beat a guy to yeah, death yeah, with yeah. a with a fire extinguisher didn't happen nope. yep. so so more more information comes out about that even about that they weren't exactly true. It goes back like it was more of a just a, a big party than more than anything else. They might not like that, but that's what, more so what it does. But yeah, it was inconsistency, and you know that, that's what they're going to do all yeah. the time. Yeah. yeah. All right, we've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor quickly, Patriot Mobile. Uh, if you haven't heard, they just expanded their coverage. So um, if you have not yet dumped your big name carrier, who, by the way, is I don't know if you realize this, they're charging you money that you work really hard for, and then they're donating a portion of that money to a bunch of left-leaning causes that you work really hard to fight against. So all of your money is actually going to these left-leaning causes. It's it's very, it's you're canceling it out. You don't want to do that. Get Patriot Mobile. Uh, they will never silence you. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. It's 2021. Switching is easy. You can keep your phone. You can get a new one if you want. You can take your number over. You can get a new one if you want to. Uh, it's very seamless. Very, very easy transaction. By the way, you can build your own bundle and get multi-line discounts if you'd like. All you have to do is go to patriotmobile.com slash news. Uh, it is patriotmobile.com slash news. Right now, this month, get free premiere activation uh, and a special gift if you use offer code news. So don't forget that offer code when you're going over there. You're getting a really great deal with Patriot Mobile. They've already got amazing prices. Plus, you're going to get a little bit extra on top of that if you use the offer code news at patriotmobile.com slash news. Back in a minute. All right, let's wrap up this conversation on Merrick Garland. There's one more that I want to that I want to play because if we have time, I've got another story that I'd like to uh, that I'd like to get into that kind of ties along with this. So uh, Garland was asked on biological males competing against women. Uh, obviously, this is something that uh, the Biden administration has put back into play in federally funded schools. Uh, and here is Merrick Garland's answer. In my last 20 seconds, I'm going to ask you if you agree with this statement, uh, allowing and I'm not suggesting the answer one way or the other, I just want to know what you believe. Allowing biological males to compete in an all-female sport 
deprives women of the opportunity to participate fully and fairly in sports and is fundamentally unfair to female athletes? This is a very difficult societal question that you're asking here. I know what, what underlies it. I know, it. but uh, you're uh, going to be attorney general. Well, but uh, I, I may not be the one who has to make policy decisions like that, but it's not that I'm adverse to it. Look, I think every human being should be treated with dignity and respect. Um, and I, I, that's an overriding sense of my own character, but an overriding sense of what the law uh, requires. Um, um, this, the particular uh, question of how Title IX applies in schools is one, and in light of the Bostock case, which I know, I know you're very familiar with, is something that I would have to look at um, uh, when I have a chance to do that. Uh, so a bunch of non-answers from mm -hmm. the man who, oh, is only supposed to be, uh, as you said, the top law guy. Uh, in the country. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. Everything is totally on fire behind us, but don't worry. Uh, let me let me tie that in because I want to get your thoughts on that, gentlemen. But let me tie that in with, so you've got Merrick Garland who has just, I mean, he's given you a non-answer, which to me is an answer, mm -hmm. right? He will protect and defend uh, Joe Biden's, uh, you know, Title IX decision to make sure that biological males uh, can compete against females, can share locker rooms, basically whatever they want. Uh, they just have to cry that they are being discriminated against and they can get whatever they want. Couple that with the fact that his new HHS pick, um, she is going to be Assistant Secretary for the Department of Health and Human Services. Um, we do know that, that this is a transgender woman. So this is a biological male who lives his life as a female, um, which is his right to do, by the way. He is an adult, but... He actually advocates, she, he, I'm going to get hate both ways, so I'll just say both out there, uh, advocates for puberty blockers and medical transition of minors. Mm -hmm. So, which completely changes the ballgame, by the way, because once again, you're an adult, you can do whatever you want, but health and human services secretary, ass assistant secretary for this department supports this. Okay, so sorry, Eric, but go I gotta go. I gotta go. go. So, Gavin, this is already the law in California. Mm -hmm. Gavin Newsom signed an executive order in California that if little Susie, who's three years old, shows up tomorrow and says, I'm a boy, and she goes in the classroom, and mom or dad denies it, that they'll call who? HHS and Planned Parenthood, and little Susie gets what's called sexual agency over her body at three, right? <sighs> They administer a puberty blocker that's a prostate cancer medicine, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. for men. Mm -hmm. Little Susie now turns 17 and goes, you know what, I actually am a girl, I want to have children. Sorry, Susie, you can't. We've sterilized you, right? Three, mm -hmm. age three and up. This is the law in California already. And now it's coming federally from the top down. And Newsom was the first one to sign. I'm just telling you, America, wake up. Incredible. Wake up. Incredible. Uh, by the way, there, here's a tweet really quickly, Eric. Listen to this. A new study, this is from Rachel Levine, um, who is the, going to be the Assistant Secretary of Health and Human Services. This was the tweet that she talked about it. A new study has found that transgender youth with access to a puberty blocker have declined in chances of suicide, mental health problems now and in the future. This study is important because it's the first to show this specific association. Um, I mean, if you want to talk about mental health, I have a couple thoughts when we're talking about children being pushed in the direction of becoming transgender. Yeah, um, I mean, I know people, a lot of people agree, disagree with me on the show when I talk about abolishing the federal government, and it seems so extreme. But, I mean, I don't know how many Does more examples. Does it seem extreme in no, 2021? Right now, I say, let it, it, it go. Should. I don't know how many times. I mean, I know I've been shouting from the mountaintops this position for a very long time, but you're seeing how jacked up it actually is, yeah, yeah. and more so how much power they can they can have that they can institute from the top that has to sort of impact all 50 states. It's completely complete nonsense, but that's how they get to operate. Look, this subject is near and dear to me. Because I'm a track, I was a track and field athlete, right? And I know that's one of the sports that a lot of this is starting to cross into mm -hmm. um, a By lot. By the way, congrats and, on breaking the women's record. Oh yes, we we, we can declare yeah, yeah. that once fastest I fastest woman I, in the world. I, I switch, yes, faster that that would be yeah. me uh, now, and I can get to because it's fluid. I get to switch whenever switch I want. Switch back. Yes, exactly. Back, Easy yeah. ram. I'm a male today. Easy. So I'm, I'm a lion today, by the way. <laughs> oh, all right, good, good. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you're you coming should, you out should, on the show. You should roar. <laughs> roar when you want to. We want to pay attention to you roar, because today I'm like, tomorrow I may be a dolphin. We'll see. <laughs> but no, like, see, I, it, it, it's one of those things. You remember when this whole scenario would come up with, and it, not just with the LGBT community, but everything really and what it encompasses? People would say, 
okay, this is going to be a slippery slope to this, this, and that. Now, it doesn't matter how you felt about gay marriage or all that other mm-hmm. stuff, but I think we can say that, okay, yeah, the slope got hell, hella slippery, and, and we're all the, we're, we're going into a direction that is, okay, everybody that warned us about this, maybe they were, they, they were on to something. When we can't even agree on the simple fact that keep your kid out of that. If they make that decision once they turn 18 or something like that, okay, sure. whatever. It doesn't mean I have to like it. It doesn't matter. I have That's to right. agree with it. Disagree doesn't matter. That's your body. You do whatever it is that you want because that you have agency over that. But we can't, the, the, the whole point of being a parent is you're supposed to sort of maintain your kid's in, innocence at the end of the day. So to sit up here and think that at three years old, four years old, five year old, because little Johnny said he wanted to be Susie because he saw his mother getting dressed or something like that and that you could sort of uh, uh, give him some sort of medication that will then impact that child's life for the rest of the rest of their life federally mandated right and we can't even agree that that's like okay that's a little too far it lets you know how crazy things has got because that should be a basic thing that we can just say that's not right it doesn't matter where you're at doesn't matter uh, there are members of the lgbtq community that would agree with exactly what it is that we're saying Rob Smith, I call That's it right. Rob. Rob Smith. Yep. Rob said, Yaku, throw that Q in the trash. <laughs> we don't say LBGTQ. That Q yeah. is trouble. Yeah. This is where all this crap could, they don't support this yeah. stuff. Yeah, exactly. I feel no, like even, exactly. I feel like the, uh, it's that LGB and, yeah. and even the T's, yeah. they're like, oh, yeah. we, can yeah. we just do like a separation? Exactly. Can we have a divorce? Because the T's are going out there with all the kid stuff. Yeah. And, it's, and it it's keeps too far. Yeah, yeah, it's it keeps way too going, far. And that's what that's the problem that I have with yeah. it. It's like it's one thing for you to keep that within yourself. Right. But what we're seeing right now is that bleeding out on the kids. When we had that little kid that was at that, uh, I can't remember his name, but I was twerking and, and whatnot, and throwing dollars yeah. at him and, yeah. and stuff like that. Like what the if we can't get uh, acknowledge that that's a messed up thing, yeah. man, we're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. All right. We got to take a break back in a minute. Yeah. Because Desmond is amazing. Yeah, that's his name. Yeah, yeah. and I couldn't yeah. think of it at the top of my head. Oh, we need to remember the, the name. Uh, Dr. Fauci, because I know you gentlemen love Dr. Fauci, value highly uh, what he has to say. Dr. Fauci told Reuters yesterday that um, the the politicization of mask wearing in the U.S. helped contribute to the nation reaching the milestone of over 500,000 deaths. He called. Yeah, Yeah. he called the uh, he called the number stunning. Um, As we know, they did have a uh, service to mark the uh, the 500,000 deaths um, in the country. But he says, uh, even under the best of circumstances, this would have been a very serious problem. However, that does not explain how a rich and sophisticated country can have the most percentage of deaths and be the hardest hit country in the world. It's I- incomprehensible to him that some governors and mayors disregarded the coronavirus task force recommendations. When the American spirit is so divided, that really really made me sad, he said. Um, And it's interesting because I seem to recall, uh, I'm trying to find it, I seem to recall Dr. Fauci with this quote, right, there's no reason to be walking around with a mask. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better and it might even block a droplet, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think it is. And often there are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask and they keep touching their face. This is example one of 10 million. Were you of quote, Fauci, who are you quoting, Sarah? Dr. Anthony Fauci, the yeah. same person who blames a politicization yeah. for uh, the, the death toll being as high as it is. Maybe people are not quick to trust you because you change your mind every Crazy. 10 freaking seconds. You take both positions, you always come exactly. out on top. That's how it exactly. works. I mean, you can't blame people yeah. for going, yeah. okay, you wait, you're saying this, now you're saying that. Maybe so I don't trust anything that, that comes out of your nasty mouth. He did. So he, he did politicized, politicized the whole mask thing. But this is the thing. Show the receipts. Yeah. When you when you look at the CDC, which I don't know why that's even a thing anyway, yeah. uh, but the CDC, and I don't know if y'all actually read the whole uh, double mask, because that's what you're yes, supposed yes, to do now. Yes. If you actually read that, 
That was not necessarily a, a, a big time like scientific no. breakthrough. They're freaking using like yes. simulations. Mannequins. They were yeah. using mannequins. Mannequins and stuff to tag. It, it, it's mannequins not like a that run. Breathe. Right. Right. Well, and by the way, they put in the fine print, this is not intended Just to work you, like in a real, in a real world, world. And it doesn't exactly. work on like guys with beards yes. and stuff yes, like that. They children. had to put that in. The, they didn't wait to the, they waited to the last paragraph no, But it's like, just to say we did a study that. with who? I say this. Show me the show me the coroner's reports because in my family, we had a family yes. member pass away during COVID. Who contracted COVID? But this is a family member that was a COPD, mm -hmm. you know, sufferer mm -hmm. for a decade, mm -hmm. right? Everything was marked as a COVID death. Why do we have the highest numbers? Because we got the most crooked people who ran the program and they loaded the numbers. They told doctors, it's, you mark cause of death, yeah. COVID, a motorcycle accident. Yeah. Now it was COVID. Right. He was coughing while he was driving, so he wrecked yeah, his motorcycle. Deaths completely dis flu deaths completely disappeared. Flu deaths, gone. No uh, congrats, COVID. America. Congrats. Yeah. I mean, what they said, like, four, it was only we like 400 or something like, uh, like hospitalization since, since October on the flu. And they'll sit up here and say, this is why I don't take any of them serious when it comes to this. Because when it comes to the flu, they say, well, it's because everybody's social wearing distancing, masks. wearing masks and <laughs> stuff like that. And then when you say, well, when California, New York has some, right. some sort of uh, spike. A rise, spike or something, yeah. they say, well, it's because people aren't, aren't <laughs> listening. Like, which, wait a minute, which one? You can't, you can't have why is it working for one uh, disease but isn't working for the yeah. for the other like yeah. sickness or, or, or virus rather these guys are full of crap but yeah. i need to see the receipts we still only have one study that shows the act that's an actual random control trial and it does not come to that conclusion that it's as effective when it comes to them i get what you're saying i guess you can have some cool little 3D model and a bunch of mannequins and stupid right. stuff. And then, oh, well, look at the look at the mannequins. Oh, it works. The mask. Look at this aerosol can that I'm spraying or something. But it's Hollywood, like Eric. We did it in the movie. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's that's right. Hollywood. That's true. That's true. Uh, look, America, do not, do not be gaslit by this man. This yeah. man is the biggest con man yeah, absolutely. in the he's, federal government that I think has this. ever existed uh. in this federal government. And that's saying a lot because there have been a lot of con men who have come along the way. Uh, none as cunning as Dr. Anthony Fauci. So do not be gaslit by him. Okay. As Eric said, we still have yet to see the studies that back all of this up. So the more that he says, obviously masks work, the more that the mainstream media repeats this, well, everyone knows that masks work. Well, everyone knows this. Well, obviously we know this. No, actually we don't. Exactly. Okay, and the more that Dr. Anthony Fauci and everyone else says it does not make it more true. So I just wanna let you guys know that because I know that there are a lot of frustrated Americans out there um, who are really tired of living this way. And um, I don't think you should anymore. All right, D just stop. Stop wearing the masks. Stop doing right. all of this. That's right. Just stop it because this is not going to stop until we stop That's it right. ourselves. That's all right, right we got to take a break. Yeah. Back in a minute. It stops That's, when we say so. That's absolutely like not even. There's no. Fault. You know, every study. All right, don't forget to uh, go wherever you get your audio podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, where, wherever it, it may be, and make sure you subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. By the way, if you review it, uh, you may see your review read live on air. Today we've got one from JP the Soulless Ginger, which I think he stole from Chad. I know he's talking about chance over here uh, behind the scenes. All right, he says, Daily Dose. We're stationed in Germany and love you guys. Hard to have favorite guests, but Eric and Yako are mine. Great fire. Oh, Next month, we're yeah. moving to San Antonio, Texas. Can't wait to listen on time. We are so happy that you are uh, you're joining us here in Texas. Um, be careful in San Antonio, though. Yeah. Because Get on the outskirts. Not... Go to Buddha or something like that. Get on the outskirts. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm familiar with San Antonio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, San Antonio, I hear, is a pretty crazy place to be right now. But, um, but thank you for your service. And uh, welcome to Texas prematurely. Uh, by the way, if you are thinking about becoming a Blaze TV subscriber, there is no better time than now. We've got a great promo going on right now. Uh, if you use promo code NEWS at blazetv.com slash news and why, you will get $30 off of a one-year subscription. Uh, $30 off of an annual subscription. Um, if you are concerned at all about conservative voices being censored, conservative voices being silenced, you got to join, all right, because we never know when they're going to shut us off and you will have access to us here. BlazeTV.com slash news and why. Use promo code news for that $30 off. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here as always. Thank you, Sarah.